Hi everyone and welcome back to the London Watch Collector channel. If you've just tuned in to my channel, I'm a watch collector, a watch enthusiast, I'm basically addicted to watches. And on my channel, I'll be sharing my passion for watches using 4K content. I'll be discussing and showing you brilliant timepieces ranging from Seiko to Patek Philippe. So guys, if you enjoy my reviews, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure to click on the notification bell and follow me on Instagram. So guys, as you can see from the title, this is me buying the newly released, newly announced Tudor Black Bay 58 released on the 1st of July 2020. It was a nice surprise from Tudor and it was anticipated that this release would be out. But to my surprise, I never even thought that I'll be buying it. Because if you guys remember, I bought the Tudor Harrods back in 2019. And a funny story is that my brother came to visit me just before Christmas and when he saw the Tudor, he just put it on his wrist while he was in London and he never took it off and he never gave it back. So believe it or not, I don't even have the Tudor anymore. I have the box and papers, but I don't have the watch. I'm looking to get myself another one because I've missed having the Tudor. I've been itching for another one. And I have a surprise for you guys because I actually picked up two Tudor watches in July. So what happened was... On the 1st of July, I went in to pick up a Tudor watch, which I will not be revealing just yet. I'll be doing the review in a couple of weeks once the Explorer video is uploaded. Because I know I promised you guys today would be the Explorer review. But I thought because this is a newly released Tudor, lots of you will be waiting for it. So what happened was, on the day I went to pick up the first Tudor was on the 1st of July. And while I was down there paying for the watch, the Black Bay 58 was presented to me. But on the strap. It was quite appealing. I love the subtle of the blue. It's actually thinner compared to the Black Bay. It's not as thick as the Tudor Harris, for example. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and unbox this newly released Black Bay 58 and talk to you about the watch and what is my opinion after owning it for a couple of weeks. So as always, with all my reviews, I'm going to start with the outside box. As you can see, a sleeve, just like the Rolex boxes. Then you're presented with this glossy black box with the Tudor logo in the center. And I find it nice how the red logo actually pops. Inside, some protective material. There's three catalogs. And I'll talk to you about the guarantee in a second because it's actually changed. But the first catalog, it's the guarantee booklet, followed by the second catalog, which is your user manual. And it's actually a common one for all Tudor watches, as you can see there, the GMT function, etc. Finally, the guarantee card, which is actually being upgraded. Because initially, they used to have the Rolex style guarantee cards, whereby you have the name of the purchaser, the name of the dealer, and the date of purchase, and of course, the model and the serial number. But here, they've actually changed it. So all you have is the model number, serial number, and the date of purchase. So guys, there you have it. It's the Black Bay 58 reference M790-30B-0002. And the 0002 is basically the leather strap. The stainless steel bracelet will have the 0001 and the NATO strap will have the 0003. So the main reason why I chose the leather strap is because it was the only one available at the time. But what I thought to myself, rather than waiting for the bracelet in a couple of weeks, if I want to add the bracelet, I can always buy the bracelet separately and then add it to it. So I have the watch ASAP. And believe it or not, once 
once I handled this white, once I took it home, what I realized is that I love the leather it has. Although it's not going to be waterproof, but I love the feel of it. Even on the website, they call it as the blue soft touch strap. And it actually feels velvety, making it very comfortable on the wrist. So the full specs of this watch. The case is made out of 39 millimeters, made out of stainless steel, and has a combination of polished and satin finished. So the side of the case would be polished, the lugs would be brushed. Its waterproofiness is up to 200 meters or 660 feet. It has a unidirectional rotatable bezel, which is in steel and it has 60 minute graduated disc. So basically you have 60 clicks rather than the 120 clicks like Rolex. And the blue you see on the bezel is made out of blue anodized aluminum and silvered markings and numerals. The dial is blue and the crystal is a domed sapphire crystal. The movement is a COSC certified in-house Tudor movement and it's the famous caliber MT5402, which is a self-winding mechanical movement with a bi-directional rotating system. The power reserve is 70 hours. The winding crown is a steel screw down winding crown with a Tudor rose with circular satin brush steel winding crown tube. The bracelet or the strap you see again is the soft touch with folding buckle and safety clasp. So one thing I've realized and all the collectors out there already know is that what Tudor has done is they've taken this Tudor and tried to resemble as much as possible to the vintage Submariners because comparing this to my Kermit, it actually feels the same when it comes to the thickness, when it comes to the aluminium bezel, lugs, etc. And it's a nice touch by Tudor because people who enjoy that size enjoy the aluminium bezel. Tudor can upgrade their bezels to ceramic, but they've kept that for Rolex. There are lots of collectors and watch enthusiasts out there who prefer the pre-ceramic rather than the ceramic Rolex watches. And the Tudor Black Bay 58 becomes the perfect watch for those collectors. Another nice feature is the loom it has. It is as strong as the Submariners as you can see there. The weight of this watch on the strap is 84 grams, which is very, very light. It's even lighter than the Aquanaut. The one criticism that I would give to this watch is when I try to change the pinholes on the strap from one to the other, it's actually quite difficult. And I'm glad that it was evident while doing the review because I had to like properly tug and pull just to be able to remove it. That would be my only criticism when it comes to this watch. But overall, guys, I'm quite happy with it. As I said, this filled up the blank space that I had when my Harrods Tudor was gone because the second Tudor that I bought that I'll be revealing it soon, it's a bit on the bulkier side. So I feel that this little subtle Black Bay 58 with a nice blue color would fit perfectly with jeans during a nice summer's day. And I'm just gonna wait and see whether I prefer it on the leather strap or I might just add the stainless steel bracelet for it. So how much did I pay for this watch and is it worth the money? So so I paid £2,520 and the bracelet version would cost you £2,760. And what do I think about this watch? I feel this is a very important release because this is the second Black Bay 58. The first one which was the gold and black version. Again it came on a leather, NATO and a bracelet. And I feel that in the near future we'll see it in different variants. I prefer the dimensions and the size of the 58 over the Black Bay. Aesthetically it's more pleasing, less thicker, less bulkier. I feel having this alongside the Tudor Harrods is a must in any collection. Although they are quite similar, but at the same time different in every way. It's extremely comfortable on the wrist, you even forget it's on the wrist, but that's because of the leather strap. I'm sure it would weigh at least 50 grams more once it's on the bracelet. You have to also consider the waterproofness while washing your hands, especially during this pandemic, because if someone asks you, what have you done in 2020? You're gonna say, I've washed my hands. So washing your hands in 2020 became the norm. So unless you keep taking it off every single time, it's gonna get a splash or two every once in a while, and eventually you'll just have to replace the leather strap. I hope you enjoyed this review. Do let me know in the comments below what do you think. Do you prefer the Black Bay 58 over the Black Bay and would you add this to your collection or not? And let me know if you're a fan of the bracelet or a fan of the straps. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching.